Welcome back to the shop. I've got some great progress on the Saab, so let's get started. To begin off, we're just going to go right in to cover what's already been done. Just briefly, a lot of this stuff I have covered on my channel before. Uh, I'm starting off this build just with the fuselage, primarily because the landing gear is being made, uh, well, modified really, by another, another member of the club. So the fuselage starts by being built upside down. I started with a top view in foam, pinned to my board. Uh, this is ceiling tile material, just had it pinned down. And then I pinned down the formers that I cut using the templates from the plans out of the foam. So then I trimmed the, uh, there, there are cut lines on each of the templates of where this center line is gonna be. So then I accounted for the thickness of the foam in the bottom half, so I trimmed that away. And after that, I created spacers like a spine, as you can see down there, to make sure that these formers were properly spaced. And from there, I went ahead and skinned. Now, a lot of people ask me, are you using monoplane foam? I'm not, I'm genuinely using ready board, dollar store foam board, a case of it sent to me directly. And that is honestly what I mean. I peel the paper away from both sides. I curl it over the edge of my work surface, not this one, cause this one is where I drop stuff. And anyway, other side. And then I glue, it. everything is glued using a little bit of Gorilla Glue, just a little skim cause it expands. And you can see right here a little bit of that expansion and yeah. So then after all of that is, is skinned, we're flipping over and we're starting to build the top side. Now the wing roots here, these are balsa. These are some uh, uh, balsa plates that I made out of the template from the plans as well. There will be a locating dowel here. Uh, obviously I'll have to create another hole for the uh, servo wires once I get to that point. But uh, this is a sleeve for a spar. The sleeve fits in nicely, nice and snug. And I've already started outfitting the motor box. Now, this is ply. And uh, the reason I'm doing ply is because there is a lot of torsion that's gonna come from the electric motor on here. With that torsion, you wanna make sure everything is squared and true and everything is Gorilla glued in as well. And I've already started getting my servos installed. <clears throat> These servos are gonna be for the elevator and the rudder slash tail wheel. And per the plans, there's no real direction on how you run this. You, uh, well, the, the plans, the plans are, so they're kind of vague. Again, these were the prototype version. I'm sure Jerry may have updated more, but also these plans were scaled down to seventh scale from fifth scale. So the, the original design has uh, servos embedded in the uh, H stabs for the elevators. So we're not doing that. <laughs> this is a much smaller model. It doesn't really need that. So we're going to use push rods. Uh, the reason we're going to use push rods, number one, reliable. Number two, don't really need to service them that much. And uh, number three, simplicity. Uh, it's arguably simpler, uh, one servo as opposed to two. And I mean, honestly, it's it's gonna save me a little bit of time in construction. I don't have to construct two servo bays. In my opinion, that takes more time. Um, but in addition, the the elevator, the H stab in the elevator is too thin. <laughs> it's too thin for, for servos back there. It also gets the weight more forward. I always like to build my models as tail light as possible. Uh, my, my whole focus of any build anymore has been to make the tail extremely, extremely light. Uh, the more tail light you can build a model, the more details you can add later, depending on how the model turns out. So back to where we are currently, we have, um, we have the model to a point where I can start skinning these, right? I can start putting on the, the spine here and then start outfitting the vertical stabilizer and make some cuts for the horizontal stabilizer. So before I do that though, I need to make sure that I've got push rods going back here. Otherwise I'm not gonna be able to find them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I do this and I'm gonna use 
Dubro laser rods. All right, so Dubro laser rods are awesome. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Dubro 101 series on these, uh, I highly recommend that you do. I show you how to install them and use them and service them and everything. And they're really great because they have these sleeves that don't let you bend them too far because inside there are ridges. So the ridges are on the inside as opposed to like Sullivan push rods where the ridges are on the push rod itself. So being on the sleeve, it prevents this from bending too far and binding. So a lot of people make the mistake when they install these, they try to bend them further than they're really designed to. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you the very basics here and then I'll put you on the tripod and let you time lapse this. But essentially what I do is I already know that my rod is way too long here, which is great. So I'm taking my laser rod and I cut a tip into it. And that's nice and pointy and that's great because that can poke straight through the foam. And I am just gonna take this laser rod and I'm gonna poke it through the foam all the way down to where I need to be. And I'm gonna take these needle nose pliers because one of them needs to go all the way down to that bearing block for the steering gear. So I have to take something and send it down, but I can guide that gradual downward arc to where I need to go using those and sticking it in there, all right? A lot of jibber jabber, a lot of updating, but I think you guys get the idea. It's pretty simple, but it's kind of hard to visualize. And so I thought I would take the time to show you. So let me get you set up and we'll get to work. Welcome back off the tripod. So it kind of looks like a bunch of red noodles went through here, maybe some licorice, but I assure you it's not. So a lot of this is gonna get trimmed off. Uh, I will probably make a final bulkhead. Uh, maybe not, I wanna, I wanna see how much flex is gonna be between here and here. But yeah, I will probably make a bulkhead somewhere around here to terminate these tubes. Probably around this line where I accidentally bent this a little bit too much a lot of force going on there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna outline what this is on in my thought process here okay so mostly these are just placeholders to make sure things are run so this is our elevator line it goes all the way down here and if you look at the plans terminates at F17 I will cut a recess for the horizontal stabilizer and we'll have a U connector for the elevator that will key in right here. So between seven or six, former 16, 17, 18, probably also go through 19. So I need to leave some of this attached because I will end up running this all the way through here and here. So it should, I should have a, some sort of control rod or horn somewhere between these two formers, okay? Now, the rudder is the same situation, only the rudder uh, is going to be a post that goes down right here. So that's why I ran this to here. All right, so these are just placeholders for now. And the I want to point out that the rudder is this one. Okay, rudder. Okay, rudder. 
and then the tail wheel is this one. Notice how I'm making the tail wheel on the outside of the servo control arm. Generally on my models, the way that I set them up is I prefer to have higher steering control than the rudder control. Uh, just because in the air, I use the rudder mostly for correcting my and coordinating my turns. I don't really need the rudder as much on the ground. Um, so when you're taking off on tail draggers, you need a lot of rudder control to, to compensate for back torque or P factor. So I want more control on my rudder than are on my tail wheel than I do on my rudder. So that's why I set it up that way. But then when you trace the rudder line all the way down, it exits here so I can go ahead and make the hardware connection down there. Now, notice also that the rudder lines are on the same half or the rudder and the, the tail gear. They're on the same side of the fuselage. That way we have a control horn here for the steering gear and a control horn here for the rudder. That way, mechanically, both are linked together and will operate in the same direction. If you were doing a nose gear this way, you would want it to be on the opposite side of the fuselage. Does that make sense? Uh, because the, if it's at the front of the, the airplane, it's gonna steer opposite of the rudder. All right, so moving on from here, I need to uh, get some mechanical stuff installed and uh, this is just how I do a basic setup for routing my control rods when I'm using laser rods. It's really helpful. And as you can see, you can rotate it, you can move things around. It's pretty easy and straightforward, but it helps also that it's foam. You can do this a little bit if it's balsa. It's a little trickier. <laughs> Um, you can, with the laser rods, it kind of helps in that you can sort of jam a drill bit in there and then use a twisting motion to drill your way forward from former to former. Uh, I've also seen people use shrink tubes on the outside of the, of the, the tube as well uh, as electrical tape to sort of help that drill bit go through. So take it for what you will. Uh, different approaches different, work for different people. This works for me. Um, so until next time, guys, make sure you keep on working on your flying works of art.